Hey guys, so this week we're going to be taking a look at Travel Tech, and the item we're going to be taking a look at is the Honor 7X smartphone from the Huawei family. So I started kind of looking at a lot of the budget phones that had been coming out recently just because they seemed like they had improved a lot, and I just wanted to see if there was something that would A, either be able to replace the iPhone as my primary phone while traveling, or B, at least work well as a backup phone. That, that I could use if I were to lose or damage my iPhone and I just had to use something else until I could afford to replace it. And so after all the research that I'd done, I came across the 7X and I have to say just looking at the specs and the information on Amazon, I was really impressed with everything that I saw. And so I was really curious and just decided to go ahead and order it. And the phone itself cost $200. So I was just really curious as to how much phone you could get for $200. And you know, once I got this in my hand, I was pretty shocked at how much value the phone actually brings. So one phone that's gotten a lot of press recently is the OnePlus 5T. This phone actually reminds me a lot of that phone. The OnePlus 5T has the rep of being the budget smartphone that can compete with the flagship phones like the Google Pixel 2 or the iPhone 10. But to me, the Honor 7X seems like a pretty compelling alternative to not just the flagship phones, but also to the OnePlus 5T. And so I was really impressed to see that this phone offers a really modern design, a beautiful screen with an almost bezel-less display. It has a really great fingerprint reader. It even includes dual cameras. So for a $200 price point, that's really shocking. And I was just really excited to kind of dive in and test this out for a few weeks to see not only if the phone worked well from a budget perspective, but also how it would feel for an iPhone user to switch over to an Android phone like this. So overall, I have to say I was super impressed with how well I got along with the phone. And I'm really excited to share it with you guys. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the Honor 7X by Huawei. So the first thing I want to talk about is what actually comes in the box with the phone. So as you can see here, I've included all the different items that you'll find when you unbox your 7X. And as you can see, it includes a micro USB charger as well as the wall block. Now these are not fast charging, so that's one thing to note. It includes a SIM ejection tool. So it's really nice when phones include this just to uh, make it a little bit easier to pop that SIM card in and out as well as access the micro SD slot. And something that's really cool that I hadn't seen on other smartphones in the past is that this phone actually includes its very own case, which I think is really awesome. Now the case itself isn't anything too special. It's kind of a silicon type clear case, very simple, but it's actually pretty slim, you know, and it fits the phone perfectly. And personally, I don't really believe in using cases on phone. I just don't like the way it looks and this is probably something that I won't be using as I use the phone. I like to just keep it in my pocket. But if you're somebody who likes to use cases and you're not very particular about them and you just want something, you know, pretty cheap and, you know, simple that's just going to keep your phone protected from bumps and scratches, then this is a really nice case for them to throw in. So when you're talking about a phone that costs $200 versus any of the flagship smartphones such as the Google Pixel or the Samsung Galaxy S8 or the iPhone 10, the big question is, can you live with the trade-offs? And so the first one, of course, is going to be the camera. I think that you know Huawei made a really great attempt to give a great camera for, for the value of the phone. Uh, it has a dual camera here, 16 megapixels on one lens and 2 megapixels on the other to kind of provide some of those advanced effects that you see on some of the higher end cameras. And the camera is not terrible by any means, but it just doesn't live up to the standard set by some of those more expensive smartphones. So if you're buying a smartphone to replace you know, a DSLR camera or anything like that, that's one thing that you may struggle with with this phone. Another one of the big kind of downsides is that the phone is not water resistant in any way. So that's something I've gotten used to with the latest iterations of iPhones and Google Pixel phones is just kind of that peace of mind that comes with knowing that a phone is water resistant and that a spill in water is not actually going to, you know, cause any long, any serious damage. Another disadvantage is that the phone does not have any wireless charging. So that's not a really a huge deal for me. I'm not crazy about wireless charging. It's a nice to have, but definitely not a deal breaker. Another one of the bigger downsides is that the phone actually still uses a micro USB port as opposed to the new USB-C standard. This is a little unfortunate to see just because the phone is being released now in 2018 and you know, I guess there's a little bit of a cost savings likely from using the micro USB, but including the USB-C would have really gone a long way towards helping to future-proof the phone or may have enabled, you know, fancier features such as fast charging. And it's just really convenient nowadays that USB-C is becoming so ubiquitous. It would have been nice to have a phone that, that also continued to use that, you know, rapidly emerging standard. So not a huge deal, but definitely something worth noting as well. The last thing that's worth noting, especially for, you know, more Android purists who really enjoy that really clean uh, Android experience on something like a Pixel or even, you know, a reduced 
um, skin such as on something like the OnePlus 5T. You know, this phone does come with Huawei and Honor's ENUI skin. I'm not a prolific Android user, so I couldn't really tell the difference between a lot of the different Android uh, operating systems. Personally, I've, I've quite enjoyed using the, this particular skin. I don't think it's very obtrusive. It's pretty easy for me to switch as, you know, an iOS user to come over to this. It's, it's kind of easy for me to navigate. It has a lot of really cool features, which I'll get into a little bit more as we go through the review. But, you know, for some people that prefer to just have less of a skin and just more of that stock Android experience, this may become a, a bit of a nuisance. On that note, I should also mention that currently the phone that I have here is running Android 7.1 Nougat. So I believe that there's some sort of an upgrade to Android 8.0 coming, but I don't have that at the moment. So if you watch this video later on, you may already be on that version, but if you're somebody who wants to be on the latest version of Android at all times, that's something worth noting here as well. And so I hate to start with the negatives because the phone has so many great features, but I figure if any of the negatives that I just mentioned are deal breakers, I'd save you some time from watching the rest of the video. But if none of those are really gonna you know, ruin your enjoyment of the phone or you still think it's worth you know, paying $200 for this type of phone uh, with those negatives, then we can definitely just jump in and take a look at some of the awesome features that this phone has to offer. So of course, the first thing I wanna talk about is this incredible display. So the phone has a 5.93 inch display with an 18 by nine aspect ratio. And so this is truly amazing. So, you know, I, I've i used the iPhone 8 Plus quite a bit, and this phone is almost the exact same size as the 8 Plus with the main difference that it doesn't really have any bezels. As you can see, there's just tiny bezels at the top and at the bottom, but the phone pretty much reaches from side to side, whereas the iPhone 8 Plus has the huge bezels making it a much smaller screen in a similar body size. So I was really impressed with just how big the screen is. The screen itself has a 1080p resolution, so it's not quite you know at the OLED and 4K resolution displays of some of the higher end phones, but it's still a really nice screen. I've had a great time watching videos and using it to read and just browse the internet and things like that. So I've been really impressed with the screen itself. As I mentioned in the intro to the video, this to me seems like a great competitor to the OnePlus 5T which has a similar kind of big screen design with smaller bezels, but that phone is actually $300 more expensive than this one. So with the OnePlus 5T, you get that you know, USB-C connection and maybe you know, a little bit more RAM and a faster processor. But I still think this is a kind of a better deal because you know, it still includes that really nice body. It's got a very thin sort of design, nice aluminum feel, and this beautiful screen. So I think that for $200, that's incredible and it's still an even better deal than the OnePlus 5T. But the design itself is super sleek. I was really impressed. It really doesn't feel like a budget smartphone when you're holding it in your hand. You know, if you held it side to side, side by side to the iPhone 8 Plus, it would be very hard to tell them apart. And so just looking here at the bottom, one thing that one thing to note is this phone actually includes a headphone jack, which is, you know, still a really nice thing to see on kind of modern smartphones now that, you know, many of the flagships are moving away from the headphone jack. It's still a really nice convenience to have for, you know, if you want to use wired headphones or if you use auxiliary ports to connect in the car or anything like that. So even though I was sad to see that it didn't have the USB-C, I feel like at least they kind of threw in the headphone jack to balance that out a little bit. So that's that's pretty nice. And overall, I just really like the design. I think it fits really nicely in the pocket. It doesn't feel overly big. And I was just really impressed that, that this is what the phone felt like at $200. Uh, one of the coolest features of the phone is actually this fingerprint reader at the back, which works super fast. I really love the placement here. You know, I've heard from many reviewers of the Pixel 2 that they absolutely love having the fingerprint reader on the back. And I have to say that I really agree that that's a lot more convenient than typically having it here at the bottom or you know, as the Galaxy S8 that has it off to the side. I love the placement here. And one thing that really impressed me is just how fast the fingerprint reader works. As you can see there, it's almost instantaneous. And one of the beauties of Android that, I've, that I'm starting to experience now that I'm you know, trying it out as opposed to being an iOS user is just how much customization is offered on something like the fingerprint reader. So something that's really cool is that you can actually use the fingerprint reader to take selfies. If you, if you touch the fingerprint reader, it will go ahead and snap a picture. So that's really cool. And then on top of that, you can use the fingerprint reader to bring down the, to swipe down and bring down the notification center. So here I'm swiping up and down and it's bringing down the notification center. So I thought that was just some really cool customization. That's likely something you can find on most Android phones. But as I mentioned, this is kind of my biggest experience with a non iPhone. So it's been a really cool learning experience. So the phone itself is unlocked, which means you can use it with any GSM network as you're traveling around the world, which makes this an awesome phone for traveling. A unique feature is that, as I mentioned, it comes with the SIM ejector tool. And so if you pop out the SIM card holder, one thing that I thought was really cool is that you could actually use this for two SIM cards at once. So 
what you can see here is that there's a slot for your primary SIM card. And then in the secondary slot, you can either put the SD card or you can put a second SIM card. So if you're traveling and you, you know, travel between two of the same locations and you just want to have two SIM cards at once, it's really cool that you can have that. But if not, I love that they include the expandable memory with the micro SD slot here. So overall, I just really love the flexibility. And these are, you know, some of the big benefits of moving to Android that I kind of missed as an iPhone user. So it's really cool to have that expandable memory. So moving on to the software itself, as I mentioned, the phone is using an ENUI skin that is custom to Honor and Huawei phones. And I have to say, it, you know, I haven't been bothered by it at all. You know, it comes, seems to come with some of the basic Android features that I've seen in the past. So, you know, multiple screens, you can customize where the different icons sit. There's a variety of widgets that you can use. It has an app drawer so that you can see all your apps at once. And as you can see, the, the phone moves really smoothly. There's no lag or anything like that. So. It, you know, it performs really well. I believe it has like three gigs of RAM. As far as internal memory, it comes with 32 gigs, but you can expand it to about 128 gigs with the micro SD slot that we just saw in a, a second ago. The phone has a front facing camera here at the top, as well as, as I mentioned earlier, a 16 megapixel shooter with a two megapixel wide angle lens that you can use to kind of do some portrait photography and to just use a variety of effects that, that Huawei has included with the camera. And the camera itself, as I mentioned, is pretty good. I mean, if, if you, you're not expecting DSLR camera quality, then this is gonna be really sufficient. The video itself seems to work pretty good. There's not too much shakiness as you're walking around. Obviously, it's not gonna stabilize like something like the iPhone 10, but it's still a really good camera for the price. But you know, as, as an iPhone user, I've really kind of gotten spoiled now that I've started using this phone a little bit more and just having things like the swipe keyboard, having so much flexibility in what I can customize as I showed earlier with kind of the button gestures on the fingerprint reader and having that expandable memory and you know, things such as having a split screen mode and being able to take advantage of you know, the large size of the screen. So something that stood out to me a lot is just that the screen itself fills up the whole area of the screen. So I noticed that when I was using the Samsung Galaxy S8, sometimes even though the screen was pretty much edge to edge, the video itself wouldn't take up the full screen. So that made me kind of upset because you have this big beautiful screen but you still have kind of that letterboxing. But as you can see here, the video actually fills up the entirety of the screen. So it really just helps you get the most out of the screen of the phone. And to me personally, with this larger, almost six inch screen, this helps me replace a tablet as I'm traveling, which you know is great for reducing the amount of stuff that I'm using while I'm on the road and just making it, making it much more efficient to pack and travel. One thing that's really impressed me about the phone is its battery life. I feel like I have to charge it every two or three days, which has been a complete difference from you know when I'm typically using my iPhone. So it's been really wonderful to just be able to experience a long battery life and not have to charge the phone quite as often. And, and as I mentioned, you know, I really feel like I'm getting a premium feeling phone with flagship type features at a fraction of the cost. So at $200, this has been an awesome phone and I'm definitely gonna be using it at least as a backup phone and maybe possibly as my, my primary phone when I'm traveling from now on. So I definitely recommend checking this out. So overall, I was super impressed with how much I enjoyed using the Honor 7X. This phone is an incredible value at $200. As I mentioned during the video, it has a beautiful, almost bezel-less 5.9 inch display. It has a really sleek, thin form factor. It looks just like a modern flagship phone. You know, besides the few cons that we mentioned during the video, for most people, this is gonna be a really compelling option, especially if you're on a tight budget. I think the performance of the phone is really good. The screen, as I mentioned, is beautiful. I really enjoyed using the Android system that this particular phone came with. And even though the cameras aren't as good as something as you might find on a flagship, it's really impressive the amount of features that Huawei tried to pack into this phone. And you know, you gotta give them points for trying. In addition to that, the fingerprint reader was super great. And I really love some additional, some additional kind of older school features that it included, such as the headphone jack and the micro SD slot. So overall, I was really impressed with how much value you got for the phone. As I mentioned a few times during the video, you can find it on Amazon for $200. You can purchase the phone unlocked and it'll work on any GSM network. The phone does not work on CDMA networks, unfortunately, but if you're traveling abroad, chances are you'll be able to find a SIM card that's compatible with GSM network, and this is a great alternative for traveling internationally, or if you just need kind of a backup phone to have in case your you know, more expensive flagship phone happens to break. So I definitely recommend you check out the Honor 7X. If you guys found this video useful and you'd like to see more tech videos in the future, please go ahead and give us a like below, and if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos, and thank you guys so much. Thank mm -hmm. you.